So they start doing their own thing. And as a result, they will come back to you and say, you know what? There's only three prayers in the day because Allah says, you read Allah Allah wants ease for you. And you know what? Fajr and Isha are too difficult. So we don't have to fulfill them. A'udhu Billah. How did you get that? You started checking on your own and people confused you. I remember someone who actually told me, you know, they actually said, once I heard from my mother many years ago, but never mind my mother. It happened to me. Someone actually told me I made two wudu. So if one breaks, I still got one more. I said, what are you talking about? Did you hear what I just said? Two wudus. Just before she wore her makeup, she said, I'm making two wudu because I'm putting on very expensive makeup. It costs 60 pounds. You know what is British pounds, right? The makeup was 60 pounds. So I'm making two wudu. If I break one, I still have the other one. At least I haven't wasted my money on my makeup. La ilaha illallah. I would have just made 20 wudus if that was okay. And whole month I would have been fine. Right? That's not correct. So you have to explain to them nicely to say, my sister, in a, in a beautiful way, instead of swearing, my sister, you know what? Your relationship with Allah through the connection that is the most powerful known as prayer. Don't compromise that for 60 pounds. You are selling that for 60 pounds. You understand? Someone asked me about nail polish. It's just an example. I'm giving an example. There is a debate. What is the debate? Some nail polishes are claiming to be wudu friendly. That means you can use them, you make wudu and you know, don't worry, it's okay, it's fine. Water goes through it. Because the ruling is when you're making wudu, water needs to get to the, you know, the, the surface of the nail. They say this is wudu friendly. So if you look carefully, there is a debate. Some people say, yes, it is wudu friendly. And other people say, no, it is not wudu friendly. I am here in the middle, I don't use. Can you see? I don't use it, right? I'm stuck. Why? Because there is an argument here, an argument there. I have had people, one sister, may Allah grant her goodness, I don't even know who she is. She sent me a mail and told me, I work in a certain company and I just want to tell you that this is not permeable. I'm shocked. I don't even know. But I, all I know is there is an argument. So one of the sisters had the nail polish. And she caught me at one of the venues in another country. And she says, I want to ask you if this is okay for wudu. Now I'm stuck. What do I do? I don't know if it's the permeable one. I, d I don't want to make haram halal and halal haram. I told her, my sister, there is a debate about this. It is less than one inch of paint. I suggest you don't compromise your strongest link with Allah for one inch of paint. Use something else. She said, I never thought of it that way. Do you understand? I didn't say it's haram, it's halal, because in all honesty, I don't know. It could be, could be. But imagine you come on the day of judgment and you did all your salah. Just imagine, is there a possibility? From a statistical point of view, there is a probability because there is an argument. Imagine you come on the day of Qiyamah and, and you are told, hey, there's zero salah next to your name. But how come? I did it all the time. Oh, you used this nail polish and you know what? It wasn't valid. Actually, now we're telling you the reality. <gasps> I didn't know. So what I'm saying is, it can happen. It may happen what I just said, right? Instead of that, come out of the argument and just say, you know what? I'm not going to compromise my relationship with my maker. The strongest link is salah. The closest that a slave can be to their Lord is when they are in prostration. And you know what? I don't want to compromise my relationship. So I'll use something else. There are so many other alternatives, mashallah. So many other alternatives. There is this hina that you can use and many other things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So this is one example. When you address someone and when you sat and thought carefully about a convincing answer, even the most stubborn can be convinced. Because in reality, it's not stubbornness. They want to understand it. They desperately want the answers. There are questions that are screaming for answers and people are just brushing them under the carpet. May Allah grant us ease. 
So my brothers and sisters, another reason why people deviate from Islam is the attitude that we have as Muslims at times in our workplaces. You know, inshallah, look, I'm going to let you know because whatever I say here is actually international material because it is being beamed and it will be beamed throughout the world. So the lesson is not just for this country. It's a Muslim country. The lesson is for the whole world. I tell you what, many people, many of the women complain at the workplace that these Muslim men, they give us such a look that just with their eyes, it seems like they've stripped us naked. It's so intimidating. Is it true? If it is true, it's a problem. Imagine you have a person who's not a Muslim and he respects the, the opposite sex. You have a person who's not a Muslim and he or she respects the opposite sex. So much of respect. There is nothing untoward. There is nothing evil that they intend. It's that respect. And then you have a Muslim man coming and he might even, you know, be, be in his own little mind thinking he's a very pious person and suddenly he sees this woman and he just does this like about, you know, and he might justify himself to say the Prophet ﷺ allowed the first gaze. I'm mean, still the first one. Don't worry. I'm still, I haven't yet looked away. No, 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 no. That's not how it should be. You give the opposite sex such respect that they restore their faith in the Muslim men. And the women, the same applies to them. We respect each other in such a way that we restore faith in one another. Today, it's very difficult to get help. You know, recently I was in another country where I was asked a question. A man who's a Muslim man is asking a question that if I see a sister who's a Muslim sister asking for a lift on the side of the road and about to jump into a taxi, am I allowed to stop and give them a lift if it is legal in my country? What a question. Do you know what they're asking? They are trying to say that is it better for this sister to go in public transport or to come with me in my car? I'm a Muslim man. And I said, my brother, I think she will feel more unsafe in your car than she would on public transport. It's possible, right? Because she would say, why did this guy stop? What's his reason? What's because we need to change this narrative slowly but surely by showing that we actually care. There are many good men out there. All of them are seated in this hall today, mashallah. Right? May Allah bless you all. I always have to cover myself because I know they are good people. We are all trying, but we need to change this narrative, become responsible when our morals and values begin to drop. Really, people become despondent. They think, look at these Muslims. But it's not Muslims. It's not Islam. It's the actions of the people. We swear, loud swear words. And the hadith says, Al -mu A mu'min is not badi, wala fahish, wala mutafahish. The Prophet ﷺ himself was never abusive or immoral in the way he spoke. You know, the F word, it's a swear word. The SH word is also a swear word. We use it like we are using salt and pepper in our food and we are Muslims. I'm being clear. I'm not mincing my words. We use these words like there's nothing wrong with it, but you're a mu'min. I want you to promise me one thing, my brothers, my sisters. A life-changing thing. Very simple, but life-changing. You want to hear it? You're ready? Are you ready? Promise Allah that you will not use derogatory, immoral, hurtful and abusive words from today. That's it. Did we promise? See, the yes was very low. Huh? Did we promise? Inshallah, you will be asked. Immoral, abusive, hurtful and vulgar. You don't need it. Use good words. You know what? You will encourage people. You will really improve yourself as a mu'min, as a believer. You become conscious. I can disagree with you. I can, for example, have a little argument, whatever, on condition that I do not use that which is hurtful, harmful, disrespectful, and so on. I must say it in a beautiful way. Why do we hurl abusive words? Swear words. I'm a mu'min. I say Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. And five minutes before that, I was swearing someone. Come on. 
Where is it? People become despondent. They start thinking, look at these Muslims. In business, we cheat sometimes. When people work for us, we shortchange them. We, we are not honest with them. You go and work for a company that is a total non-Muslim company and you're a Muslim. I do know that there is Islamophobia. I do know that there is discrimination. But in a lot of companies, they will respect you. They will give you the promotions. They will give you the increment in salary. They will give you your holidays. They will give you everything. Justice. That's why everyone wants to work for that company. Come to a Muslim company. They promised you to go. They said, don't go. Why? I need to go for Umrah. So you stay here. But it's my days of holiday. My brother, you will get a bigger reward for being honest and upright. It's okay if they agree and allow. But if you are pushing it and forcing it, all you are doing is you are letting people have a bad image of who you are. And because you're a Muslim and you're an ambassador of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth, you have actually created a bad name for the Muslims. What happened to the promotions? What happened to the way we treat those whom we work, who work for us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Our colleagues and those whom we interact with learn to develop the best of morals and values. The best of values. This afternoon I spoke at the school. I said something I want to repeat here today. I gave them two pieces of advice. I told them, be very mindful, be very responsible regarding the way you use or you make use of technology as it is advancing be very responsible regarding the way you use technology as it is advancing that's a powerful piece of advice technology in itself is not bad the way we use it can make our use of it very bad it can destroy us the phones we have in our hands probably the, tech, the this apparatus that we have we use it the most so much so that People are sitting right next to each other, but they have to call each other through the phone. The wife sends a message. She tells the husband, I love you. I miss you. I love you. I adore you. He doesn't hear a thing. He's on his phone. He might be messaging someone else saying, I love you. I miss you. Same thing. He doesn't realize. Then when she messages to say, I love you. And it comes. <gasps> sitting right next to you. And she's watching. And the only way we got through to him was through the phone. Trust me, it's happening vice versa. It's not only the men who are guilty. Let's get that correct here. It's happening vice versa. We're sitting such that we don't even know. Do you know? I know of a couple. And there are many such couples. The husband was telling me we went on a very, very expensive holiday. And my wife was not, they went to a beach. It was not Maldives. If they came to Maldives, maybe she would put her phone away and go. But my wife was only interested in how will my picture look on Instagram? How will I look on Insta? How will my photo come out? She wasn't interested in going in the water and enjoying the, 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 the swimming and whatever else there was there. She never even went to wherever else besides for photo shoots. So it's no longer a holiday. Photo shoot you can do at home with your own computer. Trust me, we can help you do that also. When you go, put the phone aside. Enjoy yourself. The moment is more important than the photo. A few photos here and there, alhamdulillah, it's okay. But to be obsessed with it to the degree that you've lost reality is where we are heading today. Even in our own relationships. Look at the Muslims. You know, divorce is not prohibited, but it is frowned upon it's the last what can i say the last resort right but it's on the increase so much because people don't know why they are marrying people don't fulfill each other's rights and then we look at each other and say subhanallah but it's the muslims muslim nation muslims and look at how they don't even get along they don't even know each other can't we deal with that inshallah let's respect each other let's fulfill each other's rights let's honor our spouses let's make them feel important trust me you change the world you change the world it's not difficult. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.